Hey, remember that time that Paul found an altar to the unknown god as he walked through uh, the, the Areopagus and um, used it as a great sort of point of witness. Uh, we, we usually talk about this to kids sort of saying like, you know, you actually get to relate to the culture. Here's here's Paul in the middle of a, a world that was very different than his. And, you know, we found a way to connect with them. And then he told them about Jesus and you should do the same. And I mean, it's not wrong, but I think it sort of misses the point uh, of, of just sort of how debased most of these other altars were. Uh, how many of these other gods that were worshipped there were worshipped through temples that had prostitutes? where worship involved sex, how many of these gods were worshipped through sacrifice, sometimes sometimes even human sacrifice? How many of these gods demanded either blood or sex as payment? The unknown god was unknown, not because they just didn't know the name Jesus yet, but because he operated in such a wildly different way than any of the other false gods ever would. Ours is a god whose altar is one where he bleeds for us, not where we bleed for him. Ours is a god who gives out of mercy, the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. You see, Paul, as he relates to the culture, is, is uh, actually not just sort of saying, here's one more god, but our god is better than all those other gods. He's saying, here's a god who is so radically different than anything that you have ever heard of, because this is not of the law. This is not of what you give. This is what is given to you. This is our god who is Christ, who is crucified for you. And this is why he's different. That leaves us then when we look around and find a pretty similarly debased culture in a wonderful place, because now it's not simply can we relate somehow the gospel of Jesus Christ to Game of Thrones or whatever other thing is going on, but rather... Ours is a God who is different than the loves of this world, than the things that this world demands. He is unknown to a, a world who would only want tribute in sex or blood. He is unknown in a, a world that would only want tribute in terms of works because he is the God who saves sinners. He is not a God of the pure. He is a God of the, the unclean, but he makes you clean in your baptism. He is not a God of those who can give the most, but he is a God who gives the most to the least of these. And, and here, we don't have to fit in. We can recognize that we're going to be unknown, but ours is still the God who gives. And he will even give, he will even give to a culture like the Areopagus. He will even give to a culture like this. Now it's not sort of cramming our God into a box that is somehow a, a, of the appetites of the culture today, but, but rather it's a God who, even though he is foreign, still has an altar here where he feeds the hungry where he gives his body and blood to you and to me, where he grants to us something that is uh, sustainable, even in a culture that is shifting because the Greek gods have passed away and so will TikTok one day. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we gather at the altar of the unknown God who is Christ, who is crucified for you. Uh, it, it is an altar where we worship not by giving, but by receiving. And for that, God be praised.